Okay, we have a recording. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this service of the word and praise of our Lord Jesus Christ coming to you by Zoom from St. John's on Chapel Hill Road. I'm Pastor Bob, and with me is Council President Stacy, and we'll be having musical uh, praise and worship uh, from Christine, our music director. If, if, if we're lucky to get that in this presentation, we'll, we're crossing our fingers. <laughs> so I'd like just for a minute to visit uh, with great hope the candles, the story behind the candles as we finish the Advent season and we get ready to welcome the babe of Bethlehem, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and just talk a little bit about the candles that we have been lighting during this Advent season and what they symbolize. You know, the first candle that we, that we lit and is still light, lighted for us today is a purple candle signifying hope, the first one. And the second purple candle signifies the love that we have for one another. These are traditional meanings and traditional colors. Now, last week we lit a purple candle and my wife, Lynn, who is an artist, told me that if you mix purple and white, you get pinkish color. And so it was a pink candle that we lit. And that signified joy, happiness, and the joy that we felt that we're getting ready, we're getting close to Christmas time, and the realization of the hope and love that we have in the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then, of course, on Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, and during the day, we will be lighting the center candle but we also have this candle, which is the candle of peace. And that's going to be the theme of my message to us today and the theme of all the worship, the elements that we have of hymnology and our readings today is the expectation of peace that comes from our Lord and Savior, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. And then finally, the white candle, which is the candle that is lit on the, the feast of the nativity, the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is called, of course, the Christ candle. So we begin our worship prayerfully. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Now, 
we continue with our readings. Our first scripture is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and 16. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in the house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers, whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, why have you not built a house for me of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. The gospel reading is from Luke, first chapter, verses 26 through 38. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will have no end. How, can, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Jesus Christ. I think that it always amazes me how excited I get at Christmas time. I'm sort of blase about it, it seems, a person of a certain age, you know. And by the way, I want to say 
I just didn't neglect to shave this morning. You might see it, but my family has urged me to try to grow a beard during this time of COVID. And the idea being do something new to regenerate yourself, your spirit, especially because it might make you look a little better on Zoom. But it's not long now. The day that we all have been awaiting is near at hand and we're kind of lucky because it looks as though it might actually be a white Christmas that we all love to see when we're kids. We're not so crazy about it as adults, of course, because we have to drive through it. But kids love the white Christmas. But we're here and we're joyously preparing for the expectation and the wonder of Christmas Eve. Now, our scripture readings continue the theme of preparing to receive the king. All through the time after Pentecost, as you recall, we looked at what the king would be in our life, how he has come and what we can expect from his new kingdom on earth. So let's consider God's holy word together. So I wonder how many Christmas cards did you get this year? Have you had a lot? You know, from time to time, people say, well, I don't send Christmas cards anymore. And in a way, that's a shame. We do everything online these days. But remember the old-fashioned Christmas cards we used to get. So people may think it's old-fashioned to send those cards today. And some think that sending a card or sending a message with the secular theme is the safest not referencing Christmas and our faith at all. They don't want to offend anybody by sending a card that reminds us that Christmas is all about Jesus Christ. But whether we send physical cards or electronic cards, it's important to remember what Christmas is all about. And that's our message today, the message of the gospel. Because the most common Christmas cards that we used to get, and we get these days, depict Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the infant Jesus himself. And many times, also, angels are depicted as well on various cards. Most scenes show a young mother tenderly caring for an infant laid in a manger. Because Mary is the embodiment of humility, she accepts God's will, as we read in the gospel today. She accepts God's will as it is to be fulfilled through her. In our gospel reading, Mary learns of her destiny through the offices of an angel, a messenger from God. We are given this angel's name, Gabriel. He is said by tradition to be a special, powerful angel, a special, powerful, angelic messenger that the Lord sends to people. Many people have great curiosity these days about angels. There's even a branch of theology called angelology. Now, angels. We lost you for a moment, but you are back. Okay, well, I'll pick up from here. Maybe, I don't know that you can edit it, or not. But I, I, angelology, I believe, is where we were left off. Right, called angelology. So angels appear in a number of places in scripture. The term angel means a messenger. And the messengers can be either humans or spirits. The images of angels with wings and the type of angel in the film, It's a Wonderful Life, or other places are artistic creations. You see a lot of angels with wings on angel cards because that gives an emphasis to their spiritual nature. It's all part of the wonder and awe of Christmas. Let's halt for a minute. Well, angels, we can go ahead with this. Angels are mentioned often in the New Testament as well. The Hebrew term is malak, and it can mean the spirit or a human being, just like the Greek term. Now, I, have, I can give you in the blog that we have associated with St. John's some references for angels in the Old Testament. 
But the focus of today's gospel is not on angels, but on Mary, the human mother of Jesus. Mary's important because of her role as the mother of the Lord Jesus. We see her here in the gospel and at the birth of our Lord, then a couple of times during Jesus' youth, and then finally at the foot of the cross. She is a symbol of humility and openness to the will of the Lord. She is a humble servant, as we are asked to be as Christian disciples. As we read in the gospel, Mary said, Behold the servant of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. And she proclaims her humble faith and gratitude in one of the most beautiful passages in scripture, the Magnificat. Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has looked at the humble state of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is for generations and generations on those who fear him. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down princes from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich away empty. He has given help to Israel, his servant, that he might remember mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his offspring forever. Humility and sweetness. But Mary is a strong woman, a mother, a powerful human being, a Christ bearer. Her humility and service to our God is a model for all of us, for both men and women, in fact. Mary is chosen to be the Christ bearer, the earthly mother of Christ, especially chosen among all human beings. But she's only human. Although she is blessed among all human creation, the scripture tells us that she is blessed are you among women. The scripture says she does not pretend to be the way of salvation. That role is for Christ alone to fulfill. As our reformers, our Protestant reformers, especially Luther, taught us. And quote from scripture, having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, you highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you among all of my human creation. So Mary is given a promise, but she asks a simple question. And the angel, who is the messenger of God, tells her, just have faith. For nothing spoken by God is impossible. You remember, as we will hear on Christmas Eve, by God's grace, the story of how the couple had to go to Bethlehem. And the reason for that was the authorities wanted a census, probably for tax purposes. It always reminds you at this time of year that as we go through the joy of Christmas, we have the work, the travail of tax time coming up. And yet we can rejoice without worry because the Lord is with us in those days of January, February, and March as well. So we are given the promise, we are given that promise at Bethlehem that Jesus Christ will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David and his reign will be over the house of Jacob forever and there will be no end to his kingdom. Now, everything in the human world ends, but this kingdom will not end. And in our first reading today, as Stacy read so well, we know that the promise is that the house of David will continue and that Jesus will, resent, will represent that house. And it's interesting that the house of David is continued through Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus. So the divine nature of Jesus as the bearer of Christ provides the vehicle for that to come into the world. And then the relationship 
the family relationship that Jesus has with Joseph, who is of the house of David. And so Jesus becomes that house. He becomes that house that's prophet, that is promised in the prophecy. So Mary comes, Mary is humbly awaiting something miraculous in her life. And she is given the news from an angel, a messenger that we read about. Not the kind of messenger that artists have to depict because we don't know what spiritual angels look like. But you know, we know what those human messengers of the gospel look like. When we have a chance, when we come together at St. John's or in the churches who are part of our Christian community, we can see that there are messengers of the gospel right in the same pews that we are. We can see those human messengers that are sent in order to spread the good word and the good news of Jesus Christ. To a plain war, hard to think about war because this is the Sunday that we think about Jesus as the Prince of Peace, especially the Prince of Peace on this Sunday. As we await his humble birth, on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, we think also that this is the promise of peace that comes into the world. We may not see it, and it's difficult these days with all the difficulties and threats that we have, but Jesus is that promise of peace for us all. And so we humbly understand how Mary received this news. She received it with joy and calm and humility. She received it at the hands or at the wings, if you want, of a spiritual angel. We receive the gospel and the good news through the hands of all of us who are the disciples of Christ. We are the angels of the world. We are the messengers that bring that gospel to the world. And may we understand that we have a joy to do that, that it is our blessing. And no matter how difficult it is in these days of comfort, of conflict and of COVID and of fear and lack of understanding on the part of the world of how great the gospel is, that we are these messengers that can carry forward the gospel and the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we understand how blessed we are for that. And may we offer ourselves humbly in that service. And now may we continue with the prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us, reflecting on each of the words that he taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who, art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be, thy, be name. thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be, will be done. done. On earth, on as, earth it is. as it is in heaven. Give us this, Give us day, this day, our day our daily bread. And forgive us, forgive our, us our trespasses. As we as forgive, we forgive those, those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us lead not, us into, not temptation, into temptation. But deliver, deliver us, us from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the is kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory. And the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now may we ask our Lord to bless us and keep us this week. May we ask him to give us power of faith and humility to know that we are servants of the Lord. Give us strength to overcome the evil that is in this world by our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.